Wrestling by itself is already really dangerous. Sure, the fights would be choreographed, but the stunts are real, and one mistake can result in someone losing a tooth or even having their neck broken. To keep fans watching, WWE has continuously created new match types. The most exciting ones are, unfortunately, usually the most dangerous ones. Some of these are such high risk that WWE has been forced to make them safer or even ban them outright. One of the most painful and unforgiving matches in WWE is the Elimination Chamber. The original chamber that debuted in Tizen 2 weighed 10 tons and was made out of steel. It looked like an awesome structure, but it was not awesome for those who had to wrestle in it. There was no padding, so landing on the metal grating outside the ring always hurt. The other thing that made the Elimination Chamber dangerous was its height and shape. Wrestlers were able to climb to the top of the chamber pods, but there wasn't much space to move around. This made it difficult to hit high flying moves properly. Rob Van Dam infamously landed on Triple H's throat during the first Elimination Chamber match because he had to crouch while on top of the pod. About 15 years later, in 2017, WWE redesigned the Elimination Chamber. The chamber was made taller, making it easier for wrestlers to perform moves from on top of the pods. WWE also added padding, which made Lenny and the steel structure less painful. Just from its name, it's clear why the first blood match poses such a risk. The goal of the match is to make your opponent the first to bleed by any means necessary. The match is already dangerous because of the use of weapons, but the real danger comes from the open wound. To bleed, wrestlers do actually cut their heads, usually using a small razor blade they hide in their boot or that a referee will give to them secretly. This can lead to infection, both for the wrestler with the open cut and anyone who comes in contact with the blood. This might be why WWE hasn't done a first blood match since 2008. Now wrestlers have blood in other matches, but since someone needs to be busted wide open to win a first blood match, that's the reason it is so dangerous. The latter match is many people's favorite match in all of wrestling. Part of the reason is because of the high risk the match presents. To win a ladder match, a wrestler has to grab whatever is hanging above the ring, usually a championship. While ladder matches can kind of be as dangerous as the wrestlers involved want them to be, there is always a certain level of risk, simply because you have to climb above the ring to win. Another reason is due to how the ladder matches evolved over the years. Most ladder matches usually involve big, high-risk stunts, which the fans have come to expect to see. This makes the match less safe, and we see many wrestlers suffer some painful injuries injuries due to spots going wrong. Dean Ambrose got a cut on his head at WrestleMania 31 when he got powerbombed through a ladder outside of the ring. Of course, Joey Mercury's horrific facial injury in Chosen 6 shows exactly how wrong a ladder match can go. Another popular match type is Hell in a Cell. The ring is surrounded by a giant steel cage and, as the name implies, all hell breaks loose. Similar to the ladder match, Hell in a Cell can sort of be as dangerous or as safe as wrestlers want to make it. However, the cell has caused so many injuries that it can't be ignored. Of course, the most famous is Mankind getting thrown off the structure in 1998 and accidentally falling through the top of the cell later in the match. Shane McMahon did something similar when he performed an elbow drop from the top of Hell in a Cell at WrestleMania 32. Too. The impact caused McMahon's belly button to get blown out, among other injuries. In 2000, Rikishi fell straight down onto a truck and injured his hip, which never fully recovered. Even non-wrestlers aren't safe. At Judgment Day 2002, Chris Jericho fought Triple H inside Hell in a Cell. The referee, Tim White, got shoved into the wall of the cell, resulting in him injuring his shoulder and ending his career. Easily the most dangerous match type in WWE history is the Inferno match. How an Inferno match works is that the ring is surrounded by fire. That's already pretty dangerous, but what makes the match so risky is that the only way to win is by setting your opponent on fire. There are no tricks either. A wrestler is engulfed by real flames. Fire is extremely dangerous to work with because the smallest mistake can result in serious injuries or even death. Fire can also spread fairly easily, also making it a risk for everyone nearby. That's why WWE has only ever done five Inferno matches in the company's entire history. In 2013, Kane fought Bray Wyatt in a Ring of Fire match. It was similar to an Inferno match, but nobody was set on fire, and Wyatt won via pinfall. In 2020, Bray Wyatt, as The Fiend, fought Randy Orton in a Firefly Inferno match. The fire was placed on the barricade and not the edge of the ring, making the match much safer. The match was also filmed and broadcast later, and no fans were in attendance. The Fiend did get set on fire, but all these precautions made the most recent Inferno match safer than the previous ones. It's unlikely WWE will ever do an Inferno match again, but if they do, it'll likely be similar to what Orton and The Fiend did, or the Ring of Fire match. Which WWE weapons are the safest, and which are the most dangerous? We rank them, and the results will surprise you.